On this episode... I think we'd better buy a house in Scotland. Just forget about it. A visit to the Isle of Rum unearthed an unexpectedly grand house. My name is Jeremy Norman, I'm the principal owner of Soho Gyms, and before that I was started the world famous Heaven Nightclub. I'm Derek Frost, and professionally I used to be an interior designer. I met Derek when he was 25 and I was 29, and we've been together ever since. I heard on the radio someone saying that spring travels up through Britain at the pace of a walking man, and I thought that was an intensely romantic notion. Every summer, Derek and Jeremy charter Kalani, an 80-foot twin-screw diesel motor yacht. Usually, they cruise the Mediterranean. This journey will be different. They'll start at the very tip of England, which is the Scilly Isles, and from there, they'll go up the Bristol Channel to South Wales. And from South Wales, right around the coast of Wales, across the Irish Sea to Northern Ireland. Then, up the coast of Northern Ireland, right to the very top, to Raitland Island, and then across to the Mull of Kintyre. They'll then proceed up the Inner Hebrides to Ullapool, taking in all the famous islands, and then from Ullapool to the Outer Hebrides, and from there on to St Kilda, hopefully if they make it. Previously... Ah, that little bump is in the penis. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Isle of Staffa, famous for Fingal's Caves, and you can see this wonderful columnar basalt formation. We're looking at a pod of common dolphin. Here they are, playing like children, so I, I've never seen them in quite this numbers before. I mean, there must be 30, 40, or even 50 of them around us. After spending the night at anchor in Loch Sunnet, Kalani awakes to a grey morning. With breakfast out of the way, they head for a more sheltered anchorage just beyond the fishing port of Malig in Inverness a journey of about 65 kilometres. Sitting at the mouth of Loch Nevis, Malik is also a regional ferry terminal for boats to Skye and the other isles. So Tim, we've got, you guys have gone to do some shopping, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I'd quite like to get one thing in there. Okay. Do we do we go in this boat and stop there? No. Or do we go in the rib? Let's go in the rib. There's nowhere to stop there, really. As always, Derek finds a local to tell him something about the area. So how long have you been harbour master? Here? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Had the fish in the, had the fish in all my life. When the heron took off, they went to the mackerel. But now that the mackerel's running down in the outer side of the heaven, he's nobody's got a license to go to eat them anymore. Right. So they're reliant prawns, just purely prawns. There's no big fish. Big fish is all cleaned up. What fish are in the farms? Salmon. It's all salmon. Right. Is that organic? No, it's not. Because that's too expensive. <laughs> it's too expensive. It was in Ireland, they told us they had problems, they lost their entire stock of salmon stock, right. to the jellyfish. Yeah, uh, we call it the red tide here. Red tide. red tide? It's a very small jellyfish, it's, it's only about two inches in diameter. Right. And it just takes all the oxygen over the air. We've had losses here, not so much down here, but further north, just on the north side of the sky, in the Tennessee border every year. Every year it's getting worse? Every year it seems to be getting worse. 
Yeah, but that could be the warming of water. Yeah, well, that's no, what it, I'm it, asking, it, really. It, it, Do you think it's the warming of water? It could really be. We I mean, see some strange jellyfish going about here that normally you would see down in the Channel Islands. You've never, like that. Not never seen them before again. But the, the water is warmer. I mean, I mean the, 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 they won't get away from that. Yeah. The water is warmer. You, have you ever been to St Kilda? Many times. It's just a jewel in the middle of the sea. Is it? Yeah. What makes it such a jewel? It's just a unique, the unique feature of the landscape itself. That, uh, I mean, you, you would really need to see it to appreciate it. We're going, we're going to go. You'll appreciate it when you see it, you really will. Then, as they are leaving... She's a pretty boat. She was up in our lot there. You see Western Isles. So we're seeing you back in Loch Ness. Yes. You're going back there? Yes. Uh, quarter past two. Go ahead. Go Open it and see. Look, it's beautifully done. This is four crabs. Wren managed to acquire the crabs for just nine pounds. Really nice. That's the fish bait. Uh, this is Loch Nevis. Um, to our right over there, those wonderful green covered hills of the Noydark Peninsula, which is reckoned to be the largest area of wilderness in the British Isles. You get thousands of acres of countryside that you can only get to on foot or by an off road vehicle and by boat, of course. This is quite nice, isn't it? Because they're, they're using mustard and honey, so they're basically making a, a sweet French dressing. So, shall we just ask um, Ren if he can do a crab salad like that or as near to that as possible? Yeah. What well, we should have it tomorrow because we should have this. We should have the monkfish today because they're like yeah. fresh. Yeah, fish. yeah. After lunch and with Rob at the helm, Derek and Jeremy set off in the rip to explore Loch Nevis. Once again, Derek spots the attractive wooden boat, Western Isles. Jeremy's sharp eye settles on a dream home, but Derek's not so keen. Derek, I think we'd better buy a house in Scotland. Just forget about it. It's such an unusual architecture. A little house at the top of the little lodge. I mean, it's obviously an old castle tower that's been converted added to, to. Uh, and added to. The low cloud makes for some stunning shots. Back to Kalani. It's time to move on. They leave Loch Nevis behind and head out to sea, bound for the Isle of Rum. A raft of Manx shearwater take flight as Kalani powers by. The shearwater spends its life at sea, only returning to land in order to nest each spring. Finally, the clouds clear and reveal yet another beautiful spring day. On arrival at Rum, Tim finds a suitably sheltered spot for the night and the crew drop anchor. Well, tonight I've got some lovely monkfish. Right. Um, obviously, I've got to skin them and yeah. fillet them. Yeah. And what I thought about doing is um, doing like a monkfish stir fry with some bacon, peppers, onions, mm -hmm. and then I finish it off with some white wine, let that reduce down a little bit. Yeah. Add some cream, salt, pepper, yeah. spice it up with a bit of chilli, lemons, and then I'm planning on serving that with some mashed potato yeah. and some nice green vegetables. And I made a nice fruit, fruit crumble. Ooh, delicious. Great. While Wren fillets the monkfish for the evening meal, the rest of the crew attend to the many tasks that keep Kalani ship-shape and Bristol fashion. Go 
gotta be fast, Alec. You gotta be fast. You never know when the boss is gonna say, change your plans. Down in the engine room, Captain Tim is checking the fuel filters and ensuring that the engine is running smoothly. While back upstairs, dinner is served. Mm. What have we got? What is the, this? The monkfish. Yes. Mm. It's it's The island of rum was bought by a Mr. and Mrs. Bullock in the uh, mid-19th century, and he was a very successful Lancastrian industrialist. The couple lived here and used it as a holiday home in a deer forest, and it was their son who, as is often the case, was hugely profligate and never did very much, and he in Edwardian times built this amazing mansion that is state-of-the-art for Edwardian England and to entertain his friends in right royal style which he did so for about only six weeks of the year. Now, I tell you what this picture's going to look like. It's going to look like Jeremy always carries everything, and it's a complete lie, because he never carries everything. He's just doing it for the camera. Derek, Jeremy and Rob hike into the interior of the island. On the way, they pass Kinloch Castle. Somewhere nearby, a cuckoo calls, a sure sign of spring. about broom, which is a rather interesting fact not known to many people, is the Latin name for broom, or the old-fashioned Latin name for broom, the genuine Roman name, was Janista. And in the Middle Ages, it became the badge of the Plantagenets, Planta Janista. Suddenly, soaring overhead, a rare sighting of a golden eagle, one of only around 440 breeding pairs in the UK. On the way back to Killarney, they decide to stop in at Kinloch Castle. Construction started in 1897, and the large red sandstone house, built for Sir George Buller, a textile tycoon, was the first private house in Scotland to have electricity. The elaborate house is still filled with much of the original furniture, art and decorations. I think this chair's rather interesting. And this is, I'm not sure what its antecedent is, but that's it's an unusual thing. I like it. It'd certainly keep the draft out, wouldn't it? That's what it's designed to do. That's an interesting chair. A 
turn-of-the-century gamebook chronicles bygone hunts, showing the names of the hunters, the number of points on the antlers, and the location of the kill. Yeah, it stops in 1915 and recommences in 1917. The break in the dates coincides with the middle years of the First World War. This one is your favourite? Yes. Yeah, in stark contrast to the dark masculinity of the rooms downstairs, the upstairs ladies' sitting room is a fine example of Edwardian femininity. Yeah, I mean, look at them, you know, they're exquisitely made. Every, all this pleating, all the way around, beautifully pleated, in three concentric kind of rows like that, and now just decaying to bits. In the most kind of, I think they're wonderful. I think they're nicer now than they were when they were new. It's an orchestrion. It's an electrically driven barrel organ and it resembles a 40-piece orchestra. Um, there's only three of these in the world and there's only two of them that still work. The only two that still working in Scotland, funny enough, one here and one in Glasgow, and the other one's in Germany. It's a German-made machine. But this one was built for Queen Victoria, but she died before they could put it in Balmoral Castle. I don't know how to change the music, but it's, like, we've got all the ones. And there's more than that we covered as well. It's quite a lot. It's like military marches and Edwardian pop songs, it's called. <laughs> In the castle grounds are beds of purple aquilegia and yellow poppies, as well as a pretty scarlet flower known as bleeding heart. They also see crinodendron and buttercups. Wild grey leggies. Joining the grey lag geese, a black guillemot makes a splashy entrance. Before heading back to Kalani, they visit the island's coastal cliffs. Do you want to take a picture of that nest there? No, it's a Fulmer's nest within a picturesque niche framed by cascading rose root. Well, I can see a couple, but they're quite small. It proves difficult to get a steady shot from the moving rib. You can just see the tubular nostril above the beak, which is a classic sign of a petrel. And the Fulmer is a member of the petrel family. There, look, it's like a little, a little bush that's sort of running down the cliff face, very Japanese style. Rum is yet another amazing example of the unspoiled and wild Scottish Highlands. The voyage around Rum is awe-inspiring, so silent and majestic. A natural rock arch provides a sheltered nesting site away from predators. It amplifies their haunting cries.
Kitty Wakes and, of course, our friends the Guillemots from the ledges, penguin-like hawks, and the Kitty Wake, a little fine, gracile gull. Smell awful. <laughs> yeah, it smells it's gracile. Gracile. Back aboard, and it's time to move on again. They set sail towards the neighbouring island of Canna, where they will anchor for the night. So how did you find those crabs when you actually got into them? Well, to be honest, um, the claws were really good, but when I opened them up, there wasn't a, a lot of meat at all. I barely got a spoonful out of each one. Really? 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 Because, you know, we talked to this fisherman today, he said at this time of year, when they are, what did he say? And he said something where they're putting a lot of their energy into them, building the shells or growth or something, and there's often, yeah. there's not a lot of flesh. Yeah. So, you know. It's a shame, really, instead of... Uh, yeah, but what do you think? Do you remember what you thought they were going to cost those things? You said 38 quid? Yeah, at, le at least. That, that's what they are if you, um, if you, go, if you go up towards London and uh, places like that. I'm sure. I'm sure. Just, yeah. just up, but what did we pay? Nine quid, didn't we? Nine pound. Um, I thought it might have been a mistake, but then again, there's so many crabs and stuff around here. The fish they, wasn't been, actually that great. That, that could have been white. Hey, nice. They look good. So how did you do these crust heating? Uh, basically, I made some bread earlier. Um, and basically, I just cut them into thin slices and I did some, some lovely dressing here. Uh, what I've done is cut some like, garlic in my garlic crusher, uh, about three or four cloves. Uh, added a little tiny bit of salt so it helps puree the garlic. Crushed it up nicely, put it in the bottom of, um, of this. Um, added a nice spoonful of Dijon mustard. Um, then some honey, and I added about half a cup of white wine vinegar, the same with olive oil, salt, uh, salt pepper, then half a cup of lemon juice. Fantastic. Uh, and mix it up. Good, well we can't wait to have that, that start. It sounds like it's yeah. going to be fantastic. I'm just chopping some lemon now. Yeah. name to this? Crab crostini. No, crab. Scottish crab. Scottish crab crostini. A la red. A la red. A la red. Go with that. Go with that. Thank you very much. Come on, can I get Yummy, yummy. Hurry up with the salt and pepper. We're dying to try to taste it. It good. Mm. I love things on toast like this or fried bread. There's not a lot of crab meat, is it, for four bloody great crabs? Yeah. That's probably where they cost nine quid. <laughs> I knew there wasn't much inside them. <laughs> anyway, what was inside them tastes good. Fantastic. A burnished sunset sees them all early to bed. Tomorrow, they will once again be chasing spring. Rob, if you get the job, I guess there's no, you can't say to the, your people, Look, is, can I not start on so-and-so? The problem I've got is I'm flying to Uganda uh, on the 1st, 2nd of July. Rob's definitely got to leave on June the 11th. Lake Horish is probably one of the most photographed and drawn scenes in the whole of the Western Highlands. This little chap here, it's Britain's only carnivorous plant. These are interesting because these are common seals, which, despite their name, are not actually that common. 